feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Hello there, welcome to the ever-increasing word feast. Abel Damina is my name. Always a joy and a pleasure to feed you with the word of his grace. Brother Paul says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified. I want to welcome you to this broadcast today. Listen very carefully. This broadcast today is intended to bring you the revelation of Jesus in all of his purity. But I'm also aware that everybody that comes into this page is not coming for just the revelation of Jesus. It's coming for other things. So listen carefully. This is a buffet. Whatever you're looking for, you will find it here. If you're looking for grammatical errors in my preaching, you will get a lot of them. If you're looking for something to criticize, you will have a billion and one things to criticize. If you're looking for my imperfections, they'll be very obvious today. That's my prayer for you, that you will get whatever you're looking for in this broadcast. And if what you're looking for is Jesus revealed in all of his purity, you will also find that in the expounding of the word of his grace. So hey guys, the buffet is getting ready for you to jump in. Grab what you came here to look for. Let me also mention that there are books of mine that will do a lot of service for you. A lot of you that have questions, you're seeking to grow, you're sincere, you're honest about the things of God. You know, this one is don't pack your bags yet. It unveils to you finding and engaging purposeful living. This one is welcome to God's family. This is a bestseller. It deals with knowing your rights, privileges, and responsibilities in Christ Jesus. There's another one praying in the spirit, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. This will be a very powerful resource for you as you seek to grow in the things of the spirit. Oh, this one is very critical. Evangelism in this year of training, evangelism and discipleship. You can't do without this book. Evangelism. Are you ready? Here's what you need to know. Half of this book is dedicated to answering questions, commonly asked questions during evangelism. Very, very powerful. A lot of exegesis here that will help you to be able to answer questions as you go to preach Christ. Finally, revelation knowledge, knowing God in Christ. These are my new books and there's a lot of plethora of books here. You can order and get for yourself to equip yourself so that you can grow in the things of the spirit. Finally, the local church is so critical. The Bible tells us God sets the solitary in families. The local church is God's device to build up believers, to grow believers. He gave gifts to men when he rose from the dead. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring, teachers for the equipping of the saints to do the work of the ministry. The essence for the local church is to equip you so you can do the work of the ministry. But remember, the local church is a place where selfishness dies. It's a place where you give yourself to service. Number two, the local church is a place where you receive ministry. So because you're going to be receiving, pride dies. It's God's device for destroying selfishness and pride. You give yourself to service and you receive ministry from the ministry gifts and from the brethren within the local church. It's so important that you belong to the local church. The Bible tells us you do not dismiss the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is. However, if you've been following my teachings and you live in a place where there is no Christ-centered church to belong, you can join one of ours or you can start one today. If you're looking for a Christ-centered church, just shoot me a mail, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com or you want to be a part of our campus that is closer to you. Send me a mail today. I will be glad to share with you and to help you locate a Christ-centered campus where you live around the world so you can go and fellowship with brethren, join the brethren, grow together, evangelize together, bring people to the kingdom and watch them grow into maturity. That's the whole essence of ministry. I always say the fruit of ministry is ministry. I'm glad to welcome you to the broadcast again today. We're going to have a blast as we study the word. Let me advise you, however, get ready to unlearn so you can relearn the word of his grace. It's so important. And if you have questions in the course of teaching, don't be in a hurry to ask. Be patient. Let the whole series be completed. 
then if their questions are not addressed, you can come forward with questions. Because sometimes when you start worrying about the questions, you get distracted from the flow of teaching. And you can even be worrying about the question and that same question has been answered. But because you were distracted, you didn't listen carefully. So pay careful attention. You know, the Bible tells us that one of the problems of the last days is that many will not endure sound doctrine. So there is an endurance required in doctrinal teaching of God's word. There's endurance required. So I want to employ you today to endure and be patient. Let the word build you up. Let the word equip you. We love you. I'm excited. And like I said in the beginning, whatever you're looking for, you'll get it in this broadcast. If you came to look for my grammatical errors, you'll get a lot of them. If you came to look for something to criticize, you will have a lot of it. But if you came to get the purity of Jesus Christ, you will find it right here on this broadcast today. So fasten your seatbelts and welcome to the buffet of God's word. Amen. We've been looking at the healing ministry of Jesus. And I said two important things in the past few days. That first of all, you will need to understand the healing ministry of Jesus and acknowledge the healing power of God because you will need healing for your body as long as you remain in this mortality. You will need healing for your body. If not today, someday, you will need healing. So that's one reason why you must understand the revelation of the healing ministry of Jesus. Number two, people around you will need healing. And you will have to be the one to administer healing to them. So, and if you do not understand the revelation of the healing ministry of Jesus, you will not be able to extend the goodness of God to such people at such moments. And you will not also be able to put your body under subjection to the obedience of Christ when such situations arise. Acts 4.32 and the whole multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. 33. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. The message of the early apostles was the message of his resurrection. The apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord. They were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter said, we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the parousia or the coming of the Lord. All right? We have not followed intelligently crafted stories. We have not followed the skillful figment of men's imagination. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw him. We touched him. Brother John calls him Jesus, full of grace and truth. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. He says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. They saw his glory as the only begotten of the father, full of grace. In the glory that they saw when they saw Jesus in the incarnation, they saw grace which is truth in that glory. The glory of God is the goodness of God. Doxa. They saw the goodness of God. And that's all you find within the glory of God. The goodness of God. Alright. So great grace was upon them. And they gave witness of the resurrection with great power. With great power. Alright. And the healing power of God is a demonstration of the goodness of God. Don't forget that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. What gospel? His message of his death, burial, and resurrection. The message of his death, burial, and resurrection. The healing of the sick is a pointer to the forgiveness of sins. The healing of the sick is a pointer that Jesus will also die for sins. In the book of Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. See the way brother Matthew will, will put the account. When the evening was come. They brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirit with his word. And healed all that were sick. That it might be fulfilled. Which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. Saying himself took our infirmities. And bore our sicknesses. 
that it may be fulfilled. So the healing of the sick was a pointer to the fact that Jesus will die as a substitutionary sacrifice. That is why he healed to show that in his good character, he will not only take care of your bodily ailments, he is also going to go right into the core of your sinful situation. That it might be fulfilled a pointer to that healing power. You can't preach forgiveness and deny healing. That will be hypocrisy. You can't preach the forgiveness of God and deny healing. Look at Luke chapter 5 verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching. What was he doing? He was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. What was present to heal them? The power of the Lord. As he was teaching, the power was present. As I'm teaching right now, the power of the Lord is present, and it is not barricaded by distance. Wherever you're watching the broadcast, the power of the Lord is right there. As long as my words, you are hearing them, because words are vehicles that transport the power of God. Words are vehicles that transport the power of God. So anywhere the word of God can be heard, at that same instance, the power of God is available. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter. Words are spirit, and in the spirit there is no distance. In the spirit there is no distance. So the power was present. That's why the centurion said to Jesus, I'm not worthy that you come to my house. Speak the word only and your word will travel with the power to wherever my child is. The word of the king contains the power of the king. The power was present because the teaching of the word was going on. Where the word is preached, the power of God is present. And the Lord was walking with them, confirming his word with signs and wonders. So signs and wonders attend to the teaching of God's word. Signs and wonders attend to the teaching of God's word. That's why you come to services with issues before the service is over. All the issues are dissolved because of God's power that is available and present in the midst of the teaching of God's word. Luke 5, 15. But so much the more when there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear. They came together to what? To hear and to be healed. To hear and to be healed. So in hearing, the healing power comes. The power of God is transported by the word of God. They came to hear and to be healed. Of their infirmities. My son, attend to my words, incline your ears to my sayings, for they are life to those that find them and hell to their flesh. That word hell to their flesh actually it is medicine to their flesh. The word of God is God's medicine. When you open up yourself to the word and you receive the word, the word heals your body. The word heals your body. That's why you attend to the word. And you can never overhear the word. You can have an overdose of Panadol, but you cannot have an overdose of the word. Panadol will give you side effect, but the word has no side effect. The only effect the word has is goodness all over the place. Attend to my words. Incline your ears to my say. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are, they are, they are life to those that find them. And they are medicine to all their flesh. Medicine. God's medicine is God's word. If you abide by your doctor's prescription to take two tablets three times a day, the word of God has its own prescription. Let the word of Christ not depart from your eyes and from your lips. Be, be so full of the word. Let the word fill every part of you until malaria has nowhere to stay. Because the word has filled every part of you. Be so full of the word. Be so full of the word. Until cancer has no survival environment. Be so full of the world. 
until fever cannot survive your body. Be so full of the world until high blood pressure does not have where to stay. Be, be, be so full of the world. Let the word of God fill you up. How will it fill you up? The entrance. So you must take it in. You must take it in. You must take it in. How do you take the word in? By listening. You listen to it. You read it. You look it. Put it on your doorpost. Put it on your, on your fridge. Put it by your TV. Put it in your wardrobe. Put it in your bathroom so that when you are showering, you are hearing the word when you are dressing you are hearing the word when you are eating you are hearing the word when you jump into a car and turn the ignition on the word comes on you get to your office you be so full of the, let your environment be word saturated that demons does not have where to survive you attend to my word because power is in the world Power is in the word. The word of God is your lifeline. Don't treat it like one of the pieces of furniture in your house. It is the only lifeline you have. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So living is by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You pay attention to God's word. The greatest favor anybody can do to you is to point you to the word of God. That's the greatest favor anybody can do. You need to feed your mind. John G. Lake said, Christ is God. Christ is God. So Christ in me means the healer is in me. Christ is God. So Christ in me means the healer is in me for two things. To heal me and through me heal others. Said very loud with me, the healer is in me. Can I hear you one more time? No apologies. Can I hear you louder? Now, if you observe in Luke 5, 17, there were Pharisees inside the hall. Doctors of law and Pharisees were inside the hall, but the people that were outside needed healing. But the people inside were not looking for healing. They were looking for anything they will use to trap Jesus. And they were the ones inside, but the people outside were not looking for what to trap. They were looking for genuine healing. The power was present, but the people inside didn't need the power so they were not making a demand on the power a demand must be intentionally made on god's power god's power is not forced on people someone must make a demand on that power for that situation for that power to take care of that situation the Pharisees and doctors of the law made no demand on the power, even though the power was present. These folks inside were suffering from mental ascent. Mental ascent. They were subjecting the word of God to their mental limitation. They were full of carnal analysis which leads to paralysis. Now, I don't want to give you rhymes. Men that are given to mental assent never act on the word of God. Never. They analyze it to a point of commonizing it. They analyze it to a point of trivializing it. They analyze it to a point of making it insignificant. They are given to mental assent. Say with me very loud, healing is mine. Right now and always. Say it again, healing is mine. Right now and always. Say it again, healing is mine. Right now and all the time. 
Say there is no special time for healing. Healing for me is always. Every time is time for healing. I didn't hear your amen. Healing is mine. Because the healer is in me. Where is the healer? Is in you. Now in that Luke 5 17, those people that were outside who needed the power came through the roof. They came through the roof and made a demand on that power. Look at verse 20. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Their faith was the demand they made on the power. Their faith made a demand on the power. What demand did their faith make on the power? Their faith was the opening of the roof and dropping the man before Jesus. Now, the only reason why they could open the roof and drop the man was because they knew that there is no way that man will appear before Jesus and not be healed. So, you can imagine somebody coming to this church and climb the roof while service is on and open the roof and begin to drop somebody through not minding it is a legal offense not minding the danger it will pose to those inside not minding the cost when faith is alive you damn every consequence and get what you must get you don't think about supposing if not, if, when you are still thinking, if not, and if, you, are, you have not yet come to a place of full persuasion. When you come to a place of full persuasion, Abraham hoping against hope, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that faithfully is he who promised, who is able also to perform. Fully persuaded faith. Say with me, I am fully persuaded. Healing is mine. Always. The healer is in me right now. Power not regulated is destructive. God's power is always regulated. Look at the regulation. Power was present. Jesus regulated it to forgiveness. Man, thy sins are forgiven. The power is regulated to forgive sins. Watch carefully. Next verse. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this who speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? That is why they came to the service to look for what to have against him. There are people who listen to me teach. They are not listening to understand. They are looking for what to pick. Anybody who listens to my teaching to pick offense is dealing with the wrong guy. I'm not aware you are existing. so power must be regulated because power not regulated is destructive have i said that you know why electricity is in this building and we're all seeing beautiful light and feeling good because it's been regulated if for any reason right now i take off the conduit that is carrying the live wire that is in that socket and I push you to touch it. You will understand what happens when power is not regulated. You will understand. It's regulated and it is measured and it is calculated to supply the voltage that is needed for productive use. Did you hear that analysis? So that is why the power that is going into the different gadgets in this building are different supply systems. The power that powers the electric lights is not the same voltage that powers air conditioners. They are different. Even the sockets are different. There's 13 amps and there's 15 amps. Is that true? 
Look, I'm not an electrical. Don't be looking at me. I'm not teaching you electricity. Just like Jesus is not a farmer and he said a certain man carries seed. Some fell on good ground, some fell by the wayside. It's a communication. Touch your neighbor, say power must be regulated. They now said, who is he to forgive sins but God alone? Jesus, see when people are looking for fault, don't pay them attention. Jesus never did. Look, while they are looking for how to rope him in and they say he's a blasphemous speaker, look at the next verse. But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, before they even spoke out, he answered and said unto them, is that not a troublemaker? What reason in your heart? You know, whether it's easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk but that you may know that the son of man had power upon the earth to forgive sins he said unto the sick of the palsy i say unto you power regulated again the regulation he regulated the power from forgiveness and redirected the same power to healing i say unto thee arise take up thy couch and go into thy house while fault finders were busy finding fault a man that came ready to receive has received and left better than all of them listen when you listen to a teaching to look for fault you can never improve you will remain where you are as a traffic policeman directing cars to park pass while you yourself are not in any When you make a demand on God's power. For example, when I lay hands on you and I say, be healed. I have regulated and directed power in your direction. And I have demanded power to move to you. But you must receive. Most times the problem in the church is people don't know how to receive. It's not that the power is not there. It's just that you are not receiving. And the reason why you are not receiving is because you are suffering from a mental block. You didn't hear that. You are suffering from what? There's a blocking on your mentality. Something has blocked your mind. Doc, two of you are doctors. You know, when you take cold ice juice, juice that is frozen, there's a way you will suck it in. It will freeze your head. Some people, their minds have stopped like that for a while. So even when we are teaching, there's a block so they can't receive. And what constitutes that blockade is a set of beliefs. Muthos is the Greek word. It means fables. When he saw their faith demand, he regulated the power in their direction. Sometimes your experience could be your hindrance to healing. Your experience sometimes. Your experience. That's why you don't build your life on experience. You build your life on the word of God. Because experience could differ depending on individuals. Luke 13 verse 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. How many years? 18 years. And the spirit of infirmity that was inside her bowed her. It's not every deformity that has a medical explanation. There are many deformities that are demonic. Deformities like deafness, blindness, people that are deformed. Okay? This woman had a spirit of infirmity that deformed her and bowed her. And she could not lift herself. She wasn't born like that. It's a condition 
that was backed by a spirit of infirmity. Now pay attention to the next verse 12. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands. So there are times in healing we lay hands. The laying of hands is used in releasing power. When I lay hands on you, power is transmitted. From me to you. It's called ministry. It's not in every case that hands were laid. They came to hear and be healed. And Jesus said, stand up, take your mat, go. In this other instance, he laid hands. Because sometimes when you find people struggling to receive, you lay hands to assist in giving them a delivery of what they are struggling to receive. Next verse. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to walk. In them therefore come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The man is angry. The Lord then answered and said, thou hypocrite, hypocrite, that not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to Watharin. Next verse. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound. So there are some sicknesses that are as a result of satanic bondage. You know? Like this woman. Whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond. Which other day is better to lose somebody than on a Sabbath day? You can get healed in a prayer meeting. You can get healed in a workers meeting. You can get healed in a wash Sunday service. You can get healed in a, in anywhere, anywhere we gather together. Because the power of God is always available. Remove it. That thing that says, it is natural. It is normal that when a woman is 55, she starts acting like a psycho. Uh, it is normal. They call it menopause. And they say there are symptoms of menopause. For a woman to start forgetting her house address and arrive at her uncle's house. No. 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 It, there is nothing normal about it. At 100, you will still be normal. Yeah, I know I'm not talking to you, so that's why you're not saying amen, right? It's fine. You can say it for yourself. It's, it's not normal. It's not normal to wear glasses at 30, even at 60. How old was Moses? His eyes were sharp under the old covenant. There are things we have come to accept because of carnality. We have agreed it is normal. It's carnality. Wrong teaching, mental block. It's not normal. It's not normal. Uh -uh. This boy you see, watch me after 20 years. After this, watch. Look. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not his benefit. Who renewed your youth like what? You are not an eagle Christian. It's a metaphor. Like. It didn't say renew your youth eagle. Who renew your youth? Metaphor. You go Christians. Where? Not in this building. In this building is only new creatures. Say my youth is renewed. Like eagles. You know why eagles? Because eagles always renew themselves. An eagle is the only bird that knows how to look young all the time. 
they have a process of renewing their youth that's why in metaphoric communication it was only an eagle they could use to identify with renewal of age it's not because you're an eagle where are you flying to so jesus in the character of god healed the sick against traditions he healed the sick against traditions he spent quality time to teach it shows that god is an information god jesus was always teaching before healing teaching before healing because god is an information god what teaching before healing does is that when you are taught and then you are healed even when we are not there if the sickness is trying to come back because you have been taught you take care of it so that's why teaching teaching healing teaching healing teaching healing jesus taught in matthew 4 23 to 24 he taught in matthew chapter 7 he taught in luke 5 17 he taught he was teaching the goodness of god acts 13 38 be known unto you therefore men and brethren that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins this is paul teaching here is a teaching service and paul is teaching them that god offers forgiveness of sins next verse and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which they could not be justified by the law of moses next verse beware therefore lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets chapter 14 verse 1 and it came to pass in Iconium, where Paul was teaching, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, that the great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed what they heard. But the unbelieving Jews teared up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Next verse. Long time therefore about they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace. And because of long time teaching, signs and wonders were granted to be done. When a lot of teaching has happened, it's easy for miracles to erupt. It's a lot of teaching because teaching will cast down mindsets. Teaching will cast down religious beliefs. Teachings will pull down unbelief. Teaching will pull down everything that stands as a barrier. When all the barriers are cleared and the power moves, miracles happen. Look at the next verse. But the model of the city was divided and part held with the Jews and part with the apostles. Next verse. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. And they were of it and fled unto Lystra and Derby. Verse 7. And there they preached the gospel. There they did what? They preached the gospel. When teaching takes place, miracles erupt. Miracles erupt. Now say with me very loud, healing belongs to me. Say it very loud louder loudest look at john chapter 9 verse 1 and as jesus passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind all these are mental blocks these people have been taught that you cannot be sick if there is no problem they have been taught about generational causes. They have been taught about family causes. They have been taught about ancestral causes. So now they have a mindset that anybody that is born blind or born crippled, somebody's sin from ancestors has been transferred. That was the mental block. So they said, Jesus, this one that is blind, who is responsible? Look at the answer. Jesus answered, neither had this man sinned, nor his parents. Don't be looking for whys, because those whys constitute a mental block. What you need is not explanation. What you need is a miracle. If they remove your womb, we create a new one. It's as easy as that. Okay, let me ask all of you. What do you want? The reason or the miracle? case closed then stop asking for why because every time you're asking for why you are looking for a reason to remain where you are that's why jesus didn't answer them 
You stay away from Jewish fables. Muthos. You will hear some people say, if your parents were promiscuous, you will be in prostitution. Have you had that before? Have you had that before? You know, I have had parents where the husband cheated on the wife or the wife cheated on the husband, either of the party or both of them cheated. You hear I say? As you're doing it like that, it's your children that will carry it on. It's your children that will carry it on. It's an old wife fable. If you're promiscuous, you're the one that will carry it. You, and it will finish with you. Your children are innocent. They have their life. Stop trying to force your iniquity on your children. It's against God. It's witchcraft. The sin of the father shall not be upon the child. Ezekiel said, no more shall this proverb be said in Israel. That the fathers had sour grapes and the children. Your mother died of stroke. You cannot die of stroke. Don't be afraid. Get rid of that myth. Your father died bedridden. You can't have it. Medical science say you can have it. That's medical science. That's not the Bible. Whatever befell your father can befall you. Your father divorced three wives. You will stay with your wife. Say, I hear you. Say, I'm afraid I may lose my wife. Why? My father has ten three away. And now me and my wife are quarreling. Quarrel is normally marriage. In fact, if you don't quarrel, you need counseling. If you quote me anywhere, if you are married and you and your wife don't quarrel, two of you need counseling because two of you are hypocrites. You are still pretending. There is nowhere two human beings gather, whether they are brother, husband, wife, sister, enemies, they must quarrel. It's part of humanity. However, when you quarrel, you must settle. So that you don't go and say, Papa, say we should be quarreling. <laughs> when you quarrel, you must settle. What is a quarrel? A quarrel is a misunderstanding. What is a misunderstanding? It means we misunderstand. I was looking like this, you were looking like this. And then I, I said, see rat, you say, see cat. I say, it's a rat, you say, it's a cat. I say, it's a rat, you say, it's a cat. And two of us are correct. Because you are seeing cat, I'm seeing rat. Nobody is correct. Both are correct. True or false. Because we are. Come, 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 doc. Come, doc. Be looking like this. See si rat. See si rat. Rat. Cut. Rat. Cut. Shut up. It's rat. Cut. He is correct. He's seeing cat. Me, I am correct. I'm seeing rat. Is it not true? Then what is settling the quarrel? Settling the quarrel will be confess. Don't. See si rat. He will say, eh, then he too will say, turn. See, cut. Eh, okay. Rat, cut, correct. <laughs> Is it not true? It's natural for us to see from different sides. That is why there is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The same account, they are talking different things. Because it depends on where they were standing to view the event. That your wife is quarreling with you doesn't mean she is rebellious. But you're always rebellious. Why is it that every time I say something, you must say another one? It, it is what I'm seeing that I'm saying now. You're seeing what you're saying. <laughs> Everybody's seeing now. If you want me to see your own, turn me to see where you're seeing. And if you're not making me see, what I'm seeing is what I'm seeing. Some husbands are not patient to make their wives see what they see. And some wives are not patient to make their husbands see what they see. So their house is always full of characteristics of living things, characteristics of living things. <laughs> the healing ministry of Jesus. Let's get back. <laughs> I think somebody's marriage is getting healed right now. There's no need for quarreling. It's just for you guys to sit down and discuss. That's why we say communication is the key to an anointed family. We didn't hear that. Communication is the anointing of any marriage. Once you and your wife or you and your husband cannot communicate, there will be marital injuries. If you want to be healed in your marriage, you must be effective that the communication of your faith 
may be effectual so that the communication of your marriage may be effectual acknowledging every good thing that is in that marriage take note of this your questions reveal your mindset Mary say how can these things be seen and know not a man that's a revelation of her mindset Zechariah said I am old and stricken in age how can I have children it's a revelation of his mindset and he wasn't even as old as Abraham there are times you question to question and there are times you question for the purpose of knowing you have to find out why am I questioning something is it just for looking for trouble or because I want to learn same thing with marriage there are times you in marriage couples are just asking questions to cause trouble and there are times couples ask questions sincerely to know so you must be able to make up your mind to be constructive even in asking questions now don't try to understand myths understand God's word stay away from any theology that is built on people's experiences so questions reveal intentions and reveal mindsets Matthew 15:8 these people draw it now unto me with their mouth and honoring with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Matthew 12, 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. So your questions reveal the intents of your heart. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, bringeth forth evil things. That's why you must ask the right questions. When you are ministering to people who are sick, the first thing you must target is their mindset. Don't look at their condition. Check their mindset because the only thing that can hinder a man from receiving healing is a mindset that is not in alignment with the provisions of God's generosity. A mindset that excuses why you must be sick. A mindset that has an explanation as to why as a young boy you are already using walking stick because you think you are an elder. A young boy is carrying walking stick. Because in his village, they say walking stick is a status of eldership. And now he's getting used to a third leg. After a while, he can't walk without a third leg. So he has three legs to walk. In the name of status. Useless status. There are traditions that neutralize the power of God. Jesus said, you have made the word of God of none effect by your traditions. That is, tradition is so powerful that it can render the word of God ineffective. You must be careful. In your village, they say, when you dream and see cobweb, it means you are going to have so much poverty. And you believe it. Then you start seeing cobweb every night. Now you have concluded that you are the headquarters of poverty. Some of you in your village, they have told you, if you dream and see yourself wearing your primary school uniform, it means you can never make progress. And from that day, every time you dream, you are wearing primary school uniform, and not even a good one. One that the bomb bomb has torn, and the part of the shirt has torn, and you are wearing it tattered like that. That is a sign from your village constitution, which you have agreed with, that you are the manufacturer of poverty. So even when we are praying for you, you'll be saying, hmm, if only you know. <laughs> we are praying in the name of Jesus. We ask that you have ideas to make money hmm, with primary school uniform. <laughs> Old white fables, muthos. Look at some scriptures quickly, quickly, quickly. First Timothy 1.4. Neither give it to fables and endless genealogies. That means your father divorced. You too will divorce. Your children is a genealogy. 
it's called ancestral something your mother died of stroke your grandmother died of stroke you are beginning to have high blood pressure and medical science say from high blood pressure is stroke so it is flowing in the line but you forget that you are a new creation you are a new creation that is new creation means you never existed until the day you were created we are the workmanship of god created in christ jesus unto good works whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of god of his own will begat he us by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of i declare over you you are the beginning of a new generation somebody say no sickness no disease is permitted to survive my environment shout amen to that sit down let's talk endless genealogies did you see it endless endless that is poverty from generation to generation to generation your father died you could not maintain old bicycle you now to even get a job is difficult and you have excused it to say it's our family tradition which family are you from i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named i belong to the royal family you are a chosen generation you are a peculiar people you are a royal priesthood you are called out of darkness into his marvelous life to show the praises of God they that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness they shall reign I declare over you as your amen will come like thunder reign over poverty reign over sickness reign over disease reign over struggles somebody shout I reign in life through Christ Jesus sit down sit down sit down sit down endless genealogies endless genealogies which minister questions why now why is everybody poor in my family why is every poor body like that why 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 endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in the faith when the doctor say i blood pressure tell him which chapter which chapter how much did you say your money is two thousand and i take your money but which chapter anyway don't 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 worry trash the team high blood pressure at my age high blood pressure at my age even by biological calculation is abnormal at my age what am i thinking i think on these things whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are honest if there be any good report if there be any virtue think on these things be careful for nothing be careful for nothing in nothing be terrified you should stay in the faith don't let anybody take you out of the faith don't give heed to fables muthos fables look at first timothy 4 7 but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness refuse it and stay in the revelation of god second timothy 4 4 and they shall turn away their eyes from the truth and shall be turned unto fables they will leave the truth of the gospel and begin to pursue theories that are unfounded persist on healing till you get it no matter the doctor's report refuse to settle down for any medical report that betrays the finished work of christ refuse to betray christ to agree with a physical evidence let no man turn you away from the truth irrespective of his evidence let all men be liars stay with the truth of god's word they be to be little bigger do you parent to speak in tongues? You jubilee kananga. Moluta barakata. I declare over you as long as I remain your pastor, no demon will molest you. Amen. 
Say healing is working in me. Say very loud. Healing is working in me. Always. All the time. Every time. Always. All the time. Every time. Titus 1.14 Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Titus 3.9 but avoid foolish questions and genealogies again and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable and vain. The word genealogy is a Greek word genealogia. It means antecedents. Antecedents. Things that have happened in the family. Firstborn was poor. Great grandfather, firstborn, was poor. Great, great, great grandfather, all firstborns in the family are poor. That's why they have one useless service. What did I call it? Come on, speak after me. I say useless service. What did I say? They call it deliverance of the firstborn. That is a useless, it's an old wife fable. It's a myth that takes advantage of gullible ignoramuses. Avoid such services. What did I say? Anyway, I know you will even go there. And if you go there, you are a product of paralagizomai. He says endless genealogies. The word endless there is unaccomplished. It has no conclusion. Avoid it. Let your conclusions be found on God's word. Foolish questions is a Greek word zetsis. Used for investigations, foolish questions, investigations. You see a man of God will tell somebody, where is your placenta? Have they ever asked you that kind of question? Where is your placenta? Go and ask your mother. When you were born, where did they bury your placenta? Because what is doing you is connected to your placenta. You see an old man looking for his mother. Mommy, where did they put my placenta? You are 55. I don't know where they put that's 55 years ago. He said, No, the man of God said, If we don't find it, I cannot be free. They now travel to village and be looking for placenta. People are suffering, man. These witches on the pulpit are tormenting people. So now you're going to village to look for placenta. You know what placenta is? <laughs> it's a small flesh that attached you to your mother. Which they caught after delivery and buried somewhere. So now they are going to go and look for the burial ground where placenta was buried before the man will be free. That's not Christ. I thank Christ Jesus, whom the Son sets free. No placenta is looked for. See, your poor, where did they bury your placenta? <laughs> Men of God are asking people to look for placenta, which has become witchcraft. That man of God has started a shrine. Placenta International. Do you know who planted the mango tree in your compound? Where is the old man who planted the mango tree in your compound? You know that mango tree between those two women in your family. There's a mango tree standing between the houses who planted that mango tree. He is the person. When he planted that mango tree, he harvested your prosperity and that of your elder brother. And until we find him, you can never prosper. Idiotic message. What did I call it? <laughs> and there are people sitting in those churches. Yeah. Mm, yes. Man of God is a prophet. Pro, 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 pro. Prophet lying. Mango tree. Who planted it? What has mango tree got to do with a man? And when we tell you the truth, you say, we, we are not seeing, we are blind. When they tell you to go and bring mango tree, you say they are, they are seeing. You yourself, are you not a problem? You are the problem, actually. Because if you are not there, their business will not prosper. Why are you laughing now? <laughs> Why are you laughing? We are climbing tree in the night. Because the prophet said you must bring a mango from the tree in your village. And the man prophesying to cannot even construct a sentence. He can't construct a complete sentence in English. He started a sentence with vernacular. 
spoke one English, finished it with vernacular, and you are still smiling with all your degree. Did you go to school or school went through you? <laughs> who went through who? Did you go to school or did school go through who went through? The man can't construct a complete sentence. He started vernacular. Only one English was inside. And even that English was in the past tense. <laughs> and then finish it with vernacular and you are still standing there. Allowing people to construct roadblock inside your head. So that when the word is coming, instead of the word entering, things are blocking the word. Mindsets must be brought down. Say, I refuse to be bewitched with my two eyes open. Even with my two eyes closed, I refuse to be bewitched. He said, This is called Zetsis. It's a Greek word. First Timothy 6 4. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of word, whereof commit envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. These are things to avoid. Second Timothy 2.23 But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they gender strife. Stop asking who, how did it happen? Why should it happen? Brother Paul says, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge. Where? In the mystery of Christ. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. I do fancies. Take the word of God as final authority in your heart. What the word of God cannot give you, number one, it does not exist. Number two, you don't need it. God's will is always healing. What is the will of God? Always. is always healing healing get rid of doubt about the goodness of God get rid of doubt about the character of God in Christ turn to your neighbor and say God is good towards me all the time say it, say it, say it very loud say it louder say it loudest I thought I would hear a powerful amen. amen. Don't your neighbor and say, get rid of old wife fables. They have told you that you can never be a millionaire at the age of 20. Who said so? Who said so? There are millionaires at 11. There are multi-billionaires at 9. Who say you can be rich? Those are mindsets that can make you a poor man. Poverty is to start with sentimentality. Get rid of those mental blocks. Free your mind. And have the mind of Christ. See possibility everywhere. All things are possible. To him that believes. And with God. All things are possible. Is there a believer in this building? Say I cannot tolerate sickness. In my body. Shout it very loud. I cannot tolerate sickness. In my body. My body has been bought. With a price. I refuse. To accommodate discomfort, sickness, pain in my body. And I declare in the name of Jesus, I make my body unconducive for sickness, disease, and infirmities. By the blood of Jesus, I refuse to give excuse to any reason why I should be uncomfortable. In the name of Jesus, I take authority. I take authority. I take authority over every contrary symptom. I cast down imaginations. I bring every thought under subjection to the obedience of Christ. I am healed. I am whole. And I shall be held. I thought I would hear a powerful amen. Somebody said the power of God is at work in me. Everybody stand. I want to pray for you. The power of God is at work in me. Say it again. The power of God is at work in me. Louder. The power of God is at work in me. Louder. The power of God is at work in me. Louder. The power of God is at work in me. 
Louder, the power of God is at work in me. Healing is at work in me. Healing flows in my body. 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 The healing power of God is at work in this building. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. All over the world, the healing power of God is at work. Lay hands on yourself right now. And as I pray, I want to be hearing your image. I declare right now, wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, the power of God that is at work on your inside, I command it to flow through your body. Flow through your body. Flow through your body. Flow through your body. Everything that is contrary to the finished work of Christ, I command it to expire out of your body. Body be healed. Body be healed. Body be healed. All the organs in your body, I command them renewed, refreshed, renewed, refreshed, renewed, refreshed. I speak to your tendons, your tissues, your muscles, your heart, your liver, your kidney, your flesh, your skin, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your entire system. I command the healing power of God to release your body from every pain in the name of Jesus. And I declare right now, every medical report is canceled right now. Canceled right now. Canceled right now. Canceled right now. And I decree from this day, whatever is wrong with your sight is corrected now. Corrected now. Corrected now. Corrected now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I declare every condition around you that contradicts redemption, that contradicts the finished work of Christ, be corrected. Be corrected. I rebuke every storm. I rebuke every wind. I rebuke every confusion. Cease in the name of Jesus. I speak peace over your body. Peace over your mind. Peace over your mind. Peace over your heart. Peace over your health. In Jesus precious name. Can I hear that amen like you believe it? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Oh my goodness, what a time we had learning and being equipped with the word of God. I'm sure you found what you came to look for on my page. I'm sure you found it today. It's so critical because that's the whole essence. But particularly, my mission here is to unveil Christ so that the believer's identity is revealed. So you can rise to your fullness in Christ. Be equipped as a minister. Be equipped as a believer and be equipped to do the work of ministry so that the body of Christ can be edified. I'm excited that you're blessed today. Don't go away, please. Don't go away. I want to encourage you. If you don't have any church you belong to, maybe you've not found a church where the message of Christ is taught or you are in a church where the message of Christ is not taught and now you're looking for a place to belong to. Two things. Number one, we have campuses and I want to recommend that you join one of our campuses, you know, because the campus is an extension of our local church here, where you're fed, equipped, where you join other believers of like faith, you grow together, a company of yours, you grow together, you mature together, you bring in new converts, you disciple them and watch them grow in the knowledge of Christ. That's what the campus unveils for you. If you live in a city where there's no campus and there's no Christ-centered church, you can start one. We're equipping you to start one. And today, if you want to start one in your locality, all you need to do, he shoot me a mail, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. We will get in touch with you, train you, equip you, and make it easy for you to start a local church and be a lighthouse where other people in your community can come, be fed the message, grow in the knowledge of Christ, and expand the kingdom of God. I'm excited, friends. What a joy to be a blessing. As you keep enjoying the broadcast, remember, we are live every day here on Facebook, in the morning, 6 a.m. on YouTube, Christocentric Mail. In the afternoon, 12 p.m. GMT plus one here on the page. And 10 p.m. GMT plus one here on the page. And for those of you within the whole of Africa, I want to encourage you to get the decoders. We have our TV channel. It's called Kingdom Life Network. The details are on the screen on how you can scan your decoders and locate Kingdom Life Network. What a joy. In Kingdom Life Network, all we have there is the message of Christ. 247. Everything there is Christ-centered. 
It's on free-to-air decoder or my TV decoder or strong decoder. You can find the channel there. You don't pay subscription, it's free. Help us tell other people about this too because the channel covers the whole of Africa effectively and parts of Europe and parts of Asia. It's important. Let's flood the blue marble planet with the fragrance of Jesus' grace. I'm looking forward to serve you grace as we meet in the next broadcast. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Amen.